Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at collections and smart collections in the Adobe Bridge. Now, I'm a crazy Adobe Bridge fanatic. I love Adobe Bridge uh, for everything it has to offer. It's a great organization tool and it's really, really great at managing your assets when you're working on a project. And one of the coolest new things about, well maybe not one of the coolest, but one of, one of the most useful new things of Adobe Bridge CS4 is the introduction of collections, collections and smart collections. We're going to talk quickly about both of them, how you can use them, and really why you should use them. Well, basically, collections gather files from multiple folders and store them in a folder for you, but they never actually copy the original files, so you're not copying tons of files. You're simply using the collection to gather a bunch of resources into one. Here's a great way to use collections. Let's say you have a bunch of stock photography on your website. Well, typically what I would do is I would duplicate stock images for clients. You know, if there was a particular image they wanted on their website, in a brochure, in anything like that, I'd copy it into that client's folder. However, with collections, you can simply have a collection for that client where you drag this image into the collection. So you're not actually duplicating the image, you're simply gathering them into these groups which are managed here in Adobe Bridge. You can go to that group, you can access all of these images, you know, maybe artwork and files and all kinds of different things for particular clients or particular projects. They're all grouped into one collection, but they're never actually taken out of, you know, your folders or copied from your folders. So you're not taking up all kinds of extra space. Uh, you could also use them for, you know, say your client is approving graphics or images or photographs, whatever it is. You can, you know, set up a collection for them and just put images right into it. And then with smart collections, we'll be able to set up Bridge to automatically do this based on a change we make to the image. Really, really simple to do. And I'm going to show you exactly what we are going to do here. So basically, what we're going to do, let's select these three photographs right here. Not that great uh, photos. They're actually kind of junk photos. Uh, but basically, we're going to set them in their own collection. So what I'm going to do, we've got the collections panel here, under here, window and uh, collections. Right down here at the bottom, there's the new collections button. All right, we're going to select new collection. And it's going to say, hey, would you like me to include these files in the new collection? Sure, I absolutely do. Um, that is actually why I selected them in the first place. So that's one thing I want you to understand is one way of getting files into a collection is just select those files that you want to place in a collection and create a new collection. Hit yes, and we're going to say zoo junk. Now, typically, I wouldn't group junk folders into a collection. A collection is going to be for stuff I want to keep. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to name it zoo junk. All right, so you can see that we have these in this collection. We can remove any image from a collection just by hitting remove from co collection. Now, remember that these are referencing those files in that original location, so we're not actually copying these files. So by removing it from a collection, we're not deleting it from the hard drive. And the same goes for our collection. If we delete the actual collection, we're not deleting all the images in the collection, just the thing that's gathering all those images together. Hop back over here, and if we want to place more images, here's another uh, antelope. We're going to drag this guy, drop him on Zoo Junk. You can see he is now in there. So really, I probably should have named this collection Antelope, but uh, Zoo Junk is what I named it. So that is a quick look at regular collections. Let's take a look at smart collections. So these regular collections are great. We don't have to sacrifice our folder structure the way we normally like to keep things. It's just another added feature of organization. We can just quickly throw folders into collections and keep track of them. Uh, folders or files, that is, into collections to keep track of them. But Smart Collections take, takes this thing a whole step further by automatically gathering the images for us. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's go ahead and create a Smart Collection. That's this button. It's got the, the sort of folder with a little gear next to it. That's a Smart Collection. We're going to hit New Smart Collection. And I don't have any images selected or anything. But basically, I'm going to say, yeah, look in Elmwood Zoo folder. All right, that's this zoo right here that I took these shots at. And we have all kinds of criteria we can search to, or criterion, uh, if you will. So we have all of these different things we can look for. When the, the file name, when it was created, when it was last modified, uh, the bit depth, the color mode, height, width, the copyright notice, a description, keywords, labels, rating. Uh, all kinds of things, including focal length, ISO, exposure. So all kinds of different things you can find images by. You know, I could find every image that was taken at the focal length of 135 millimeters just by setting my focal length to 135. I don't want to do that, however. I'm going to go by something I use a bit more, which would be keywords. And I'm going to look for the keyword eagle. All right, and this is within this folder. And you can see here I have the keyword eagle in my keywords panel, and I've assigned it to all of these eagle images uh, beforehand. 
So what's going to happen, and before I go ahead and do this, let me just point out a couple things about smart collections. You can add more than one criteria. So I could say it has to have the keyword eagle, and in the file name it has to have a certain thing. You can see I don't really have these file names named anything uh, worthwhile, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get rid of the extra uh, criteria. And uh, you can say if all of the criteria are met, so that would mean that the, if I did multiple criteria, it would have to have the eagle keyword and something in the file name or a certain focal length or a certain ISO or whatever I picked. Or we could say just if any of the criteria are met. So let's say I had uh, at these antelope photos with a keyword on them. I could just add another keyword and I could say so if it has the, the keyword eagle or the keyword antelope, and I would just type that right into there. However, I don't have that set up to do that, so I'm just gonna stick with if all criteria are met. So basically, you just have an option, you know, do you want me to match it exactly, or just be a little more loose with it? I'm gonna include subfolders, although I don't need to be concerned with that. And again, non-index files, it's warning it may be slow. I've got nothing here that's gonna really mess me up. So I'm going to hit save, and here in New Smart Collection, you can see it's gathered all those photos for me, and I can just name this Eagles. Now, the really, really cool thing about this is not only can I go in and edit this smart collection later, so if I decide, hey, I do want to include antelope photos, or here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, add a keyword here, and we're going to say, well, we're going to stick with the junk. So we're going to say, contains the keyword eagle or junk, so we're going to set our match to if any of the criteria are met. I'm going to hit save. You can see it doesn't give me anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and back again. This brings me back to the, this folder. I'm going to select these four antelope photos, which I've already placed in the zoo junk collection. That's kind of irrelevant at this point. And over my keywords panel, I'm going to hit new keyword. And this new keyword, I'm going to call it junk. All right. I'm going to, with these four photo, uh, photos selected, I'm going to check off the word junk. All right, great. Well, what does that do? If I come back to this collection, you can see they're automatically gathered and placed in that collection for me. So this smart collection is truly very intelligent, and it's going to automatically update when you add uh, photos, you know, if you add a keyword to a photo, or if you just want to keep track of all the photos you ever shot at 1600 ISO, you know, you just select your main folder that contains all of your photos and just tell a smart collection, hey, grab all of the images that are ISO 1600 or anything like that. So all kinds of different things you can do with collections and smart collections especially, really, really great. And again, you can just delete a smart collection by just coming down here and selecting junk it and that will delete it. Uh, and it's also uh, important to know that when you delete the collection, as I mentioned before, you do not delete all the photos inside of it, just that collection which is gathering them together. Okay. Another thing, if you edit a photo in a collection, it is actually editing that original file out on your hard drive because that's all it is. It's just referencing that file out there and gathering it together for you. So that is a quick look at collections. Very, very useful tool here in the Adobe Bridge. New to CS4, uh, so sadly those of you not using CS4 will not have this feature, but a huge time saver and a really great organization tool. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned it. I hope this will help you maybe speed up your workflow here and there. And uh, hey, please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.